Hello friends, you are most welcome. I have been thinking about you and I'm glad you tune in to learn something new. Today we'll be learning that purity guards our minds. Purity guards our minds. Well, have you ever come across this word? G-I-G-O? Gigo? Well, it's a computer word which stands for garbage in, garbage out. Garbage in, garbage out. And I will be coming, I will be talking about that word throughout this lesson. This means if the information one puts into the computer called input, the computer has a CPU called a central processing unit that will process whatever you've entered into the computer and it will display something on the screen called output. For example, if someone puts in your computer or your smartphone, 2 plus 2 equals 3. Guess what? Your computer or your phone will process that information and the calculation which will come onto your screen will be 3. Now, boys and girls, 2 plus 2, you get 3. Suddenly, no. So that is garbage. Why? Because the person who entered who programmed your computer or your phone entered in garbage. What does Gigo stand for? Garbage in, garbage out. Now, this word is also very important as we think about our topic of sexual purity. What are some of the ways we can put garbage into our minds that make us Think sinful thoughts, especially about sex. You're thinking things like having evil friends, <laughs> dirty jokes. Remember those songs? The words that we sing? The pictures, pornography we watch on our phones? Mm -hmm. The vulgar words? here on radio and TV shows, in movies, in these advertisements, your internet, the books, and sometimes the magazines. If we put this kind of garbage into our minds or wrong information regarding sex, guess what? We will be acting in the wrong way and what will come out of our minds and our actions will be garbage. Today boys and girls in our second episode we will show, we will learn the importance of refusing to allow garbage into our minds especially as we talk about sexual purity. Now the mind is easily deceived Often, evil information appears true and good. That's why our values promise is so important. Here we go. Let's read it together on your screen. I will guard my mind against bad thinking. One more time, let's read it. <laughs> we go. I will guard my mind against bad thinking. Good job. Is there any one of you who loves stories? You're not alone. I love stories too. This story is one of the true stories in the Old Testament, in the Bible of someone who was very wise, did most times the right thing, and this time around, he allowed garbage into his mind. And therefore, garbage came out 
and terrible things happen. Remember, wrong thoughts lead to wrong action. Wrong thoughts lead to wrong actions. Perhaps you have heard of someone called King David. Hmm, I can see that. Almost everything he did was good and right. In today's story, it's a little bit different. It's exceptional. Before David went with his army, whenever they had to go for war. But one time, he decided to send his army commander with them alone and he stayed at home. It's time he chose not to go with them. They let me chill. One evening, while he was cheating, he saw a beautiful woman bathing. Instead of immediately turning to do something else, he allowed impure thoughts to enter into his mind. He allowed garbage to enter into his mind. And his mind started to process. Let's continue with the story. David kept thinking about her and found out her name. She was Bathsheba and she was married to someone called Uriah, one of the soldiers in the army. Again, instead of stopping evil thoughts in David's mind, he asked her to come and ended up sleeping with her, ended up having sex with her. Soon after, David found out that Bathsheba was pregnant. Hey! Guess what? He knew what he had done. He knew what he had done was wrong and now he had to cover up. Hiding! And that is sin. Quickly, he sent a message to the army commander. Remember the people who, were, who had gone for battle? He sent a message and asked him to send Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, to come back home. I'm sure you're seeing David's mind. He's coming up with a plan. Well, David asked him how the battle was going and then told him to go home. Of course, he wanted, to, he wanted it to look like Uriah was the father of the child. But Uriah did not feel it was right for him to go home when the rest of the army was sleeping in tents. So he slept with, Dave, he, he, he slept with David's servants. Guess what? The next day, David made Uriah drunk, hoping that he would go home this time. But again, he did. He didn't can see the power of the mind. David is going through a lot of things and he's thinking. All that started because he allowed garbage in. Hey, because David allowed garbage into his mind, more garbage came out. He went ahead and sent a letter back to the army asking him to put Uriah in the most dangerous place and then leave him alone so that Uriah would be killed. And that is exactly what happened. Let's read what happened next. On your screen, in the second book of Samuel, chapter 11, verse 27, this is what happened. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to him his house and she became his wife. 
and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. Did you hear that last statement in the verse? What David had done, God was not pleased. He did a number of things. He took Bathsheba to be his wife. Was that right? No. How did God feel about it? He was displeased. Even though he thought he had covered up his sin, God saw it and was displeased. David certainly did not follow our values promise. Do you still remember our values promise? All right, let's say it together. Let's read together. I'll guard my mind against bad thinking. One more time, let's go. I will guard my mind against bad thinking. Told you that wrong actions, wrong thinking, and wrong actions result in suffering and pain. The story continues. Soon after David and Bathsheba's son was born, God sent a prophet named Nathan to David. Nathan told David that he had committed adultery and murder. Adultery? Yes, he had married a wife who wasn't his. Murder? He had planned Uriah to be killed. Just as we see it in the Bible, again, the second book of Samuel, chapter 12, verse 10. This is what it reads. Now therefore the sword will never depart from your house, because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah to be your own. Why did God's pun what was God's punishment? God said the sword. Murder would always be part of David's family. You may be wondering, eh, but God was so hard. God was so hungry. Yes, because David had committed adultery. Now, before Nathan left David, he also told David that his son would die. Immediately, the child got very sick. David tried to fast for six days, but on the seventh day, the child died just as God had said. The Bible tells us that David admitted his sin, repented, and asked God to forgive him. Although God forgave him, the consequences of his sin remained. Boys and girls, consequences stay with us and that's why we need to be very careful what we allow into our minds. Well, David experienced the pain and the loss of his child. And just as God said, many of his children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren were violently murdered. So our actions we do they go ahead of us. Many people are affected. Many people experience the pain because of the things that we have allowed our minds to do. So it's never about you, but there are also other people who could be affected with your actions. I'm very sure that David regretted that evening. Which evening? The one when he allowed bad thinking to enter his mind. He wished he had obeyed God and remained pure. If he had made that good choice, he would have done what our values promise. Today says, do you still remember the values promise? Let's repeat it together. I'll guard my mind against bad thinking. One more time. You can look straight to the person you're next to and say this various promise like you really mean it. One, two, three, let's go. 
I'll guard my mind against bad thinking. If there's anything for you to remember in this lesson, this is one thing you need to remember in this lesson. If my friend, if you were David, what would you have done in order to guard your mind against that garbage? Mm -hmm. I'm waiting. You're right. David could have turned and would have gone and did some other things which would have been more important. He would have taken a walk. Maybe he would have read the word of God. Maybe David needed to get busy like, you know, read your books because now you're still in this primary level. So you needed to read your books and get busy. Or find a friend to come and help you than just being there idle. Remember, garbage in, garbage out. Say that one more time. Garbage in, garbage out. And I know you boys and girls, you shouldn't allow garbage to enter your mind. There's a lot of things that you can think about and turn out to be a great boy and a great girl. Boys and girls, our minds dictates our actions. All actions begin with a single thought. To act right, we must think right. To act right, we must think right. From the Bible, it gives us a good guide and practical instructions regarding our minds. And if you get this right, I'm very sure you will always challenge whatever enters your mind. The book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. This is what it says. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In this verse, how many guidelines does the Bible give us that we should think about? There are eight of them. Did you see them in the verse? Oh yes! The first one, whatever is true, okay, mm -hmm. noble, that's right, right, I like that, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy. I but to think about those things. And I'm very sure there are so many things that you are able to think about and the Bible has given us a guide. What are some of other examples of things we should think about? What are some things that are true, noble, pure, all right? Think about these things even while you're studying, even while you're following the school's guidelines and regulations, even while you're getting advice from your parents and teachers and friends, the music you listen to, that fun that you always enjoy, the good books, the clean TV or movie programs, the books and magazine. There's a lot of clean things that you are able to read and fill your mind with these things. Each time, boys and girls, you choose something to do, something listen to, something to read, or even a friend to spend time with. Use this Bible verse to test if what is going into your mind is good or garbage. And the moment it's garbage, just kick that out of the way because you know garbage in, garbage out. 
I hope you will choose to follow our values promise and avoid all the trouble and the heart that David caused for both himself, Bathsheba's family, and his children, and his children, his children, and all those grandchildren. I'm very sure you'll be able to be that kind of boy and girl. Before my friends come on with their dancing shoes, let's welcome them by repeating after me our values promise. I will guard my mind against bad thinking. One more time. I will guard my mind against bad thinking. was lovely. Now let us end our episode today by talking to God about our minds. Let us pray together. Dear God, please help me resist the temptation to fill my mind with bad things. Help me to think about good things so that my words and actions will be right. Amen. Thank you for following through. I hope you enjoyed. Remember, purity guards our minds against bad thoughts. Boys and girls, see you next time in our next episode. You've been great. Bye-bye.